It's just before midnight. Our camera crew was out on a routine assignment covering a slashing incident on the subway. Suddenly, they came upon a dramatic chase scene. Police officers rushing into this northbound D train. They were after two men reported to be armed and dangerous. While passengers watched in horror, officers grappled with the suspects. They felt a gun in the jacket of one. He was pushed against the wall. As the cops tried to remove the gun with a knife, the trigger clicked. There was a great sigh of relief when it was found to be a toy gun and not a real one. No one was seriously hurt. The two suspects were charged with third-degree assault and possession of imitation weapons. Scenes like this from last night are not out of the ordinary. Crimes on the subway continuing to rise steadily. To give you an idea of just how much crime has gone up, in 1977, the total number of subway felonies was 12,661. By 1980, that number had risen to 13,737. The latest figures show that the numbers are still increasing. Last month alone, there were 1,367 felony crimes. At this time last year, there were only 988. This means an increase of 38%, but not 60% that has been reported in the newspapers. Still, there's little consolation to the people who ride the subways every day, every night, in fear. Roger Sharp will have more on this story in an interview with the police officers and the wives in on that arrest. Roseanne? and the wives of those officers. Roger? Well, Storm, right now we're live at Columbus Circle, and earlier in the broadcast, we showed those dramatic pictures uh, last night of transit cops uh, chasing suspects uh, underground here at Columbus Circle. The men involved are part of a new 100-man task force assigned by transit police to try to do something about the spiraling crime underground. The ongoing saga of the good guys and the bad guys behind the subway crime statistics. Being a rider may be risky, but being a transit cop is an almost constant uphill struggle. At the Lindenhurst Long Island home of transit police officer Henry Nowasad, his wife Diane, three daughters, and partner Nick Pingatori, we view a playback of last night's subway action at Columbus Circle and talk about the nasty job of combating transit crime. Is that a common technique to hide a gun, whether it's real or not? Oh, yes. Uh, they hide it uh, because uh, if, if they're in uh, the process of, of, of committing a crime, uh, they don't want to be discovered until uh, they actually uh, uh, commit this crime. Are the criminals, the bad guys, uh, just getting more blatant, or does it seem? They are more blatant, especially these, uh, the young ones. The young ones know that uh, they have turnstile justice, as we call it. You go in one door and out the other. Youths that uh, are caught for robbery usually get recogged to their parents. They go home the same night. If they go to family court, uh, usually they get a little slap on the wrist. And they know they could get away with it, and they are more blatant than anything else, the youngsters. You go to work every night knowing you might run into a bad guy with a real gun. What goes through your mind when you're chasing down a car like that? Well, in um, my mind is to uh, make the apprehension, of, of course, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, with that also is the idea to uh, do it as safely, because I know I, I have a family, as you can see, that I want to get back to, and that's always on my mind. I try to uh, make the arrest without uh, really uh, getting uh, uh, hurt or uh, getting uh, people hurt. Pictures it's like scary. <laughs> There are a lot of crazy people out there. I think, uh, what I, I don't try to think about it, but if I do, I know he has a good partner with him. That's important to me. I know there's somebody there to back him up. He's an hour late. I'm a wreck. But he's learned over the years that if he calls, things get a lot calmer. So he calls as soon as he makes an arrest, and then I know that's why he's late. It's rough. He's got so much time invested now. I mean, it's a hard thing to say, let's just forget about it. If he wasn't a cop, what would you like him to be? Uh, a bank president in Long Island? I, I really don't know. <laughs> well, Henry shows no signs of getting a job as a bank president on Long Island, so after eight years uh, as a transit cop, he intends to hang in. It's one way of paying his mortgage, but it is a tough job, and it's not a routine day at the office. Both uh, Henry and Nick believe the only answer to the subway crime problem is manpower more transit cops on every train, on every platform. More will be going into service later in the year. Uh, graduates are coming out in April and July. 
but at this point, I think you almost need an army to make underground really safe for those going to and from someplace. We're now live at Columbus Circle, Storm. Roger, I was just wondering, um, it seems like a, a terribly thankless job. Do these guys feel almost as if they're left out in the cold by the public? They're not getting the kind of support that they would like to have? They seem to be rather encouraged currently by the, uh, the focus of the media on uh, the subway crime situation. Uh, they, they say you really can't feel this change in statistics. It, it, it may be up 38% according to the most uh, recent statistics. They sense that it's, it's been there for several years. It's very much the same, perhaps a bit more blatant, but still there. They're grateful to have the attention because they think public awareness uh, is going to help them have more success in doing their job. They're also making an effort to uh, do what other uh, uniform services are doing, and that is concentrating manpower so that even somebody lighting a cigarette or slightly making an infraction is going to get busted and, and, and then may be a little more cautious in carrying out that mugging or more serious crime later on. Okay. Thank you very much, Roger. Roseanne? Storm, despite last year's flooding, New Jersey was in the midst of a severe water shortage at the time. Not so this year. Jersey City's two main reservoirs...